on today's episode of the Cryptoverse. How about an email system that gives you full confidence that a message is actually from who you think it's from? Well, Microsoft, in collaboration with Stampery, have added blockchain-based document authentication. TunnelBear is the simple VPN app that makes it easy to browse the web privately and enjoy a more open and secure internet experience. Try TunnelBear for free by checking out the link in the video description below. Hi there guys and welcome to the latest episode of the Cryptoverse, your regular dose of news and commentary on Bitcoin, cryptocurrencies and blockchains. I am your host, Chris Coney. Now today is the 13th of April 2017. What day is it? I don't even know what day it is. Is it Thursday? I think it's a Thursday. We're going with Thursday. So I have one announcement for you today and then we'll get into the market roundup and then the news. Hey, that Ricardo is a funny guy, isn't he? From Monero. You know, I quite like him. A number of you actually said the same thing, which made me think. It made me think that I've been missing a trick here. It would be good if you find people submitted questions that you would like me to ask my various guests. So let's try this for next week's guest. David Apple from Bitcoin Empire is coming on next week. So please go to cryptoversity.com forward slash survey and you'll see this simple form that allows you to submit a question that you would like me to ask. Now I'm going to extend this to allow you to submit the names of guests you want me to get on because I think that would be another good improvement and it would also ensure that I'm serving you in the best possible way. Now let's move on to the market roundup, courtesy of CoinMarketCap.com. Now here's an observation for you. It comes off the back of something that I mentioned on the live stream last week. If I check in on CoinMarketCap each day, and then Bitcoin's price stays the same, well that means that its purchasing power is increasing enough to counteract the new supply. So think about this. If 12.5 Bitcoins are mined every 10 minutes, that's 1,800 new Bitcoins per day coming into existence, right? And that's effectively reducing Bitcoin's scarcity because there's more of it every day. Now, if the price stays the same or goes up, it's doing so while absorbing the downward pressure from those newly created coins. Now, this applies to more than just Bitcoin, of course, but I find it very interesting. It's how a Bitcoin could stay, say, around $1,200 per coin but its market cap could continue to increase. So just I thought I'd point that out for the next time you're on coin market cap. Because the market cap is total supply multiplied by price, if the price stays the same but the supply increases, that's how come the market cap could increase while the coin price stays the same. So let's now run through the top 20 and see what we've got. You are not going to believe who the biggest winner is today. It's good old Pivx. Yet another 40% gain over the last 24 hour period, causing it to displace, made safe, and entering the top 10 at position 10. Now, if you want some PIVX, you'll now be paying $1.82. And that BitConnect down here, you know, we spoke about this yesterday. BitConnect has shot up another 32% to $11.85. And for what I've researched, I have a lot more confidence in PIVX personally, out of the two, but either way, BitConnect still had $1.8 million of trading volume, nothing to sniff at. And of course, the big reveal yesterday was that Kraken have now added support for Dash, which is most likely the cause of today's 13.1% gain for Dash, which closes the gap on Litecoin a bit, but isn't enough to catch it. Actually, in the last 24 hours on the Litecoin network, support for segregated witness technology among miners has reached 81%. So that's 81% in the last 24 hours. And you know, I say don't take any notice of that. But it's 68% in the current activation period. And the goal is 75%, remember. So the new activation period starts in just over one day's time. So I expect to see that 67% jump up quite a bit. And if it gets above that 75% and then it holds for a full activation period, which is two weeks, we'll have the first ever 
live activation of SegWit. Now that will be interesting. So in terms of the news today then, I have to turn to Bitcoinist.com. Now before I start this, I want to say, I do read the YouTube comments, you know. And one of the most common reasons people say that they like my videos is because I don't get lost in the sensationalism of prices or ICOs or drama. Now, do I cover these topics? Well, yes, of course, but they have their place. But from reading the comments, the thing that people seem to appreciate the most is that I take the time to look at like the technical innovations and the real applications of Bitcoin cryptocurrencies and blockchains. And I'm actually glad to hear that because that's exactly what I'm going for. And my intention is to boost cryptocurrency and blockchain adoption, which means zooming in on what is actually useful. Now, the downside to that approach is that it doesn't pay very well, not as well as the hype topics anyway. I'm fine with that, but when I ask for financial support and then I get hate for it, that I don't appreciate. So that's why I've become much more willing to just ban people, like I said yesterday. And I, f I figure that I'm already making sacrifices to do this, so I definitely don't have to put up with idiots. My point is, though, thank you for the supportive comments, and I'm glad today to bring you another such news story, which I find very exciting. And thank you again to all existing patrons, which enable me to continue to do this. So let's get into the actual article itself. It's entitled Microsoft Office can now verify documents on the Bitcoin blockchain. Well, it's not just the Bitcoin blockchain. They've uh, added support for Ethereum as well recently. That's probably because of the transaction fees, but let's get into that. So it says here, Stampery, which provides verification of documents against both the Bitcoin and Ethereum blockchains, will be accessible for verifying emails without users leaving Outlook itself. Now, I personally have not used Outlook in at least five years. However, when I did, I do remember using some features that it has or had that attempted to validate emails in this way, right? You could create a kind of digital signature to sign the emails when they went out, but blockchain technology makes this into the feature that I think it was always capable of being. And in terms of adoption, the fact that you're going to be able to do this right from inside Microsoft Office applications is a huge step forward. You know, just like Ricardo was saying yesterday, the complexity needs to be hidden from the user and just work. So the article goes on to say here in the uh, orange, quote, Stampery provides this functionality today by creating hashes of documents submitted through the web and storing them on the Ethereum and Bitcoin public blockchains. So just a quick revisit of Cryptography 101. You take the entire contents of a document, which ends up being just one long string of characters, since the spaces and the punctuation marks have a character code. So while you look at a Microsoft document and it looks, it's formatted, you have paragraphs and this and that and the other. As a computer file, it's just one extremely long uh, number, basically. That's how it's represented in, in the computer world. This is how you get a unique copy of a document. In the digital world, it's just one massive number. So you run that through a cryptographic algorithm, of which there are many to choose from, depending on the application, and the result is something called a hash. Now, anyone can do that. So I would add my private key onto the beginning or the end of the document before generating the hash, because anyone could take a copy of the document, run it through the cryptographic algorithm, and get the hash out the other end. So the input is easily accessible and unique, right? So anyone will be able to generate that hash. But what allows me to sign it is my private key. If I put that onto the beginning or the end of the document, then hash it, then you've got you know this unique fingerprint. So the hash is a shorter string of numbers, much shorter than the original document, and it acts like a fingerprint of that document, right? And you'll get the same result every time you run it through the same algorithm. Assuming the input is exactly the same, the original document is the same, and it has the same private key on it, you run that through, every time the hash that comes out the other end should be the same. Now that means if you change anything about the source document, right, you add a space character, you delete a full stop, or you even turn a lowercase letter into an uppercase letter. When you run that document through the algorithm, the hash that comes out the other end will be different. Right? This is why it's important for me to include my private key before I generate the hash. 
So when I compare the two hashes and they don't match, I know something's wrong, right? Either that second hash has come from a completely different document or someone has modified my original document. Maybe that second one was signed with a different private key. Now, it doesn't really matter what the reason is. All you care about is the fact that you know for sure the second one is not authentic. So let's move on here to the yellow bit. Under this heading called removing centralized trust, it says Microsoft adds that while various solutions already exist for document certification online, these involve signature storage via a centralized entity, thus placing trust at a weak point. Now that was one of the major problems with the old Outlook digital signatures for emails, right? There was still an element of trust in a central authority. What this company Stampery are doing is taking those hashes we talked about a minute ago and storing them in the Bitcoin and Ethereum transactions and then broadcasting those transactions to the network. So Bitcoin has this operation called op return, which is basically a field within a Bitcoin transaction where you can store a small bit of data. Now, don't quote me on this, but I believe this is where Stampery would be storing the hash of the documents that users are signing. And that data is then stored forever in the Bitcoin blockchain, just like any other regular payment transaction. Now, people say this isn't actually a legitimate use of the Bitcoin blockchain because Bitcoin's meant to be a payment network. However, in the free market, Bitcoin is whatever people end up using it for. You know, if you pay the transaction fee and you follow the rules, you can do whatever you want with it. So the article goes on to say here in the green bit, quote, once the hash data is present on the public blockchain, the document can be changed without invalidating the hash. This approach guarantees both the document's privacy and the data's availability for future validation purposes. That's the other beautiful thing here. We're not storing the document on the blockchain, only the hash. And that means the original document is private, right? The hash is stored so you can prove authenticity at a later time. And this is an important distinction. This isn't cloud storage for the document itself, right? We'd leave that to the likes of Sirecoin and Storage and all those guys. What we're talking about here is just storing the hash to prove that we have the original, original document at a later date. It also says here in the blue that Microsoft adds, noting the code for the Office implementation is open source and available on GitHub. Microsoft contributing open source code. One brownie point for them, eh? And th this is, however, adding value to their Outlook product, so they are moving wisely as a business. So in conclusion then, if I just scroll back up to the top here, let's look at the bigger picture. What does this mean for us? Well, these signed documents are legally valid, so they can be used as evidence. Big win. Also, when we can count on documents as being authentic when we receive them, it stamps out fraud and it saves us a ton of time in both business and personal lives. And imagine flipping a switch inside your email settings where you only accept incoming emails that have been digitally signed in this way. Right, that way, if someone spams you, you'd A, know who it was, and B, you'd have proof to go after them which probably means they wouldn't risk spamming you in the first place. So thanks for joining me today, guys. If you liked this episode, hit the like button. If you disliked it, hit the dislike button. Please leave me a comment below with some feedback and get subscribed. And please support the Cryptoverse and boost cryptocurrency adoption by going to cryptoversity.com forward slash podcast and becoming a patron. From just a few dollars a month, you can secure Cryptoversity's future get unlimited access to all Cryptoversity courses, and access a private patrons-only chat group where you get direct access to me. That is all for today, guys. I'll be back tomorrow with another episode of the Cryptoverse. So until then, it's me, Chris Coney, saying bye for now.